guys, welcome back to Dad's Van. Today we're going to be installing a subwoofer into the passenger area of the van. In a previous video I showed you how to pre-wire that from the amplifier. And today's an exciting day because we're actually going to get that installed and get some nice bass going in the van. Um, so I've got some links to the products I'm going to show you today in the video description. Um, check those out. Um, I do earn a small commission if you click those links, but it doesn't cost you anything more. Um, so if you're thinking about buying any of these things, uh, please use the links. Um, I really appreciate your support. All right, let's uh, see how to get this done. Okay, so here's the subwoofer panel um, I received from Impact Products. Uh, this costs about 85 bucks on eBay. Um, now I had to uh, let the manufacturer know uh, via email what the um, hole diameter needed to be for the subwoofer that I bought. As I mentioned, you're going to need to uh, communicate with uh, Hein, who's uh, the gentleman who manufactures these. Let him know what the hole dimension needs to be. Um, if you're going to be using the same subwoofer that I am, which is the Rockford Fosgate Prime R2, it's a 10 inch, 2 ohm speaker. Um, it's got um, a low profile so it'll fit in the van wall um, without contacting anything. Um, and you're going to need this hole cut to 9.13 inches. Um, that's, the diameter for a, that's the diameter for a top mount onto this panel. So first thing I'm going to do is just a little test fit of the speaker into the hole that's been cut. Just a heads up on the uh, R2, they did stash some mounting hardware here in the foam. I'm going to throw that foam out and we need that mounting hardware. Install this subwoofer behind this panel here where the passenger seat is. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is pop this panel off. Alright, so I got the panel that fits in the center uh, or the the second open panel behind the driver's seat so I'm going to have to pop out the passenger seat in order to get to that and work on it. Alright so before installing this we're going to have to drill some holes, pre-drill some holes for the screws provided by the manufacturer. Um, for that, I'm using a 532's bit um, with a stop collar on it just to make sure we don't drill too far and punch through the side of the van. And then I'd also recommend using a magnet as you drill each hole just to collect any metal filings. And then once those holes are drilled, we'll go back through and paint.
center of this circle is. Make some markings on the floor here. And I'll mark where that is on the side panel. And we'll go and cut that. Nice magnetic level will help us. circle starts so nine and a half up three inches over from this hole nine and a half up will be the center line all right so to mark this off I'd recommend using a t-square if you've ever done drywall you'd use one of these so from three inches over, we have our mark. And we know it's nine and a half up to the bottom here. And then um, another four and a half to the center of the circle. from the back side so I could locate the center. Then go ahead and make sure that the panel piece is lined up here. Double check that you're about four and a half from the center all the way around. And then just using a box cutter, go around. And there's some black foam that's taped onto here. That shouldn't be a problem. My main concern was I just didn't want to rip into this as I was cutting it with a jigsaw. All right, I chose to install these Kicker PSC 65s. Um, they're a coaxial speaker. They're usually um, installed on motorcycles, but they're really a low profile, so they can also work on SUVs and other places where there's not a lot of depth available. Um, so, nice thing is they come with uh, the wiring you need uh, to connect to these terminals on the back for both positive and negative. 
And they come with uh, butt connectors. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do next. We go over the van, get these wires attached onto the wires uh, feeding from the amplifier, and then get hooked up to the back of the speaker. All right, for the other rear passenger speaker, uh, we're gonna mount that um, kind of in the mid stitch section of this panel. Uh, so I took some measurements in the van and the panel that is closest to the driver is about 13 inches wide. Um, the, uh, this little post here, uh, this little plug here is about four and a half inches in, so we want to get to about six and a half and then kind of come up to the center of this metal panel and that's where we're going to make our cutout. Now if you got the stock Sprinter uh, rear passenger audio, those speakers um, are reinforced by this metal plate here and you can get these from online or from your Mercedes dealer around about 14 bucks but I figured it was worth the time of cutting it. Um, so I'm going to put those on the back here just as an added reinforcement since I'm going to be mounting the speaker directly onto the cardboard. I won't have a mounting panel like I did for the subwoofer. So this will give it a little more support uh, since this material is a little bit firmer. And then the center of this speaker is going to be uh, to kind of uh, line up with the other rear passenger. It's going to be middle of this panel, so that's going to be around 11 inches up. So I'm going to go ahead and take my doing is using some metal cutters to widen out the full diameter on this to about five and sixteenths or five and one sixteenth. I mean it is five and one sixteenth at a couple of points but not all the way across. Oh, that's 
Widen those out a little bit, then this will fit. Alright, so we've got this cut, uh, we just need to put the reinforcing plate on the back, and then we can uh, screw this on. Those are self tapping, so I'm going to just go ahead and pre drill onto this back plate. That's the easiest thing to do. secured onto here. It's top mounted but the depth is um, only about a half an inch which is really nice. Really low profile. Alright we're back in the van now. We've got the kicker speaker installed on the panel. We've got the cutout for the subwoofer. So we just need to slide things back into place and then do some wiring. All 
Alright, for the subwoofer wiring, I'm just gonna need to. Got a lot of extra cable here. Trim this down. Rockford Fosgate R2s. Um, I got the 2 ohm version. Comes in 2 ohm and 4 ohm, but if you get the 2 ohm version, then you can configure it to run uh, with either um, a 1 ohm load, run as a 1 ohm load, or as a 4 ohm load. And since I've got my system set up, with all the other speakers running on 4 ohm, I'm gonna run this on 4 ohm as well. So that's matched for the amplifier. Now to do that, uh, there's some wiring diagrams that come in the manual. So for the 4 ohm load, what we wanna do is take positive and negative wires here. Alright, so to run this as a 4 ohm, we just need to connect the uh, positive and negative on opposite sides to our feed. And then we're going to jumper the other two positive and negative cables together. Jumper those together, we're going to need a one foot piece. Pull this back because I have so much extra. So we've jumpered the positive and negative on the top connection together. And then from the amplifier feed, we'll attach positive and negative to the other two. All 
right, so to wire up these kicker speakers, they include the little terminal connections for you. All you gotta do is use these provided butt splice connectors to hook it up to your feed wire from your amplifier. I've got 14 gauge wire that I ran from the amplifier so that fits these provided uh, connectors perfectly. Okay, go ahead and pull test those, make sure they're good. And then last step is just hooking these up to the speaker. All right, in my case I've got the speaker with the terminals up on the top, so positive is on the right, negative is on the left, and they are labeled, but it's a little hard to see with the lighting here. All right, Is everything in place, we can Tuck the wiring away. Snap the panels back on. Okay, we're at the final step of our Sprinter speaker upgrade. It's going to be installing the speaker into the rear passenger sliding door. Um, in an earlier video, I already did the wiring for that. It's probably one of the hardest parts of this whole uh, speaker upgrade project. Uh, but now we just need to cut a hole here to install the speaker and it should be just like we did on the uh, driver rear passenger side. What you're going to want to do is pull this panel off. Behind here is where we have the speaker wiring already routed. Just be aware that um, there, there is a angle cross section here. So this angled beam here, so you're going to need to install the speaker somewhere in this area. Uh, my plan is to install it at the same height as the other side, so um, that's going to be on this panel. Go ahead and pre-mark it. It's going to be right here in the second segment. I'd end up a little bit higher. Might end up just a little bit higher than on the driver's side because the, the stitching on these doesn't match exactly, but this will be a good location. Okay, get that marked, take it out and cut it. Okay, so uh, we're going to be cutting the 5 and 16th inch hole right here on this panel. Um, again, these um, reinforcements are good to put on the back side just because this is a little bit flimsy. These run about 14 bucks from the dealer. Um, these are about 5 and a 16th across, uh, just not in all areas. So we will need to trim just a little bit of the metal here. And for the initial cutting, I'm going to go ahead and mark this off. on the 
back side. Okay, again, these reinforcement panels, they are about five and a sixteenth. Um, you know, uh, across here and here, but then where these screw holes are, it's not quite five and sixteenth. So the easiest thing that I found to do is just, to, if you have some metal cutters, go ahead and trim that metal back next to where those screw holes are. Having a pair of these cutters is a really good investment. It comes in handy, especially when working with sheet metal. Okay, I'm just trimming off about an eighth of an inch here. Maybe a little more. Okay, now we've got five and a sixteenth all the way around. Uh, you might want to start with that and use it to trace. Uh, might help you with marking and cutting the holes. important to do a test fit make sure the speaker lays all the way flat especially on the sliding door side because we have to have clearance when the door is open um, you know one of the reasons we bought these kicker PS C65 the PSC 65s is because they're really low profile and lightweight which is good for the door because of this panel being a little bit flimsy and also because we don't want more than really a half an inch or so sticking out from the panel after we mount it. Okay, I also want to make sure we're flush on this panel. And then we can go ahead and mark where we need to drill mounting holes. All right, the screws that come with the Kicker PSC65, I'm going to pre-drill with a 9.64 bit. Okay, so to pre-drill this, uh, I'm going to use a 9.64 bit. pre-drilled through the side panel the four holes. And we're going to put the cover on top of those. Then what I'd recommend is just start a screw through each one just a little bit so it protrudes on the back side.
And then we can come underneath and line up our pre-drilled metal plate. With those protruding screws. part to connecting the speaker. We'll go ahead and hook up the speaker wire that we fed from the amplifier. Kicker speakers come with wire for hooking up the terminal connections. One is black and white, you can use that for negative feed. Okay, now I have the speaker mounted uh, with the terminals up. So that's going to have a positive on my right hand side. And the negative on my left hand side. back up. And we're finished. Uh, one of the last steps on these kicker speakers is going to be putting a little emblem on. So I've got a little super glue on here. And then we'll plug it in right on the holes where it's supposed to be mounted. Alright, and there's a the finished product. Got the kicker emblem on there. Speakers mounted on the sliding door. This is the crucial part if you're putting speakers on here. Make sure you get the panels all the way on. It's really important to get a speaker with a low profile. Especially if you're top mounting, so it'll clear the side of the van. Alright, last step in the um, speaker upgrade is actually putting a cover on this Rockford Fosgate R2. Um, surprisingly, they don't make a cover for this. Uh, but I did some research on the web and it seems like the uh, Rockford Fosgate Prime R1 10 inch cover should work with a little condensing. So we're gonna give that a shot. Oh, 
definitely it's a little bit big. this around and in. You can see that. Just kind of work your way around. Not easy to get in, it takes some work. Um, but ultimately, did get it in there, and you know, it looks good, so can't complain too much. All right, here's just an up close look at the uh, Rockford Files Gate R1 10 inch speaker cover. Said I did get it to fit in there. Just took a little work to bend it and get the diameter down so it would fit. But overall, it looks nice. I'm happy. Gotta show you guys one more thing on this uh, with the speaker cover. Um, it barely clears the armrest, so keep that in mind when getting a speaker cover for the woofer. If you don't use this one. Um, just make sure you get one that doesn't stick out too far. I'm gonna take a measurement here, make sure that it clears that. In my case, I got lucky. All right guys, that concludes the speaker upgrade on my 2018 Sprinter. Um, it was quite an adventure. It took me a few weekends to get all this done. Just a quick recap on the front speakers. We installed um, both a woofer and tweeter with crossover from Hertz. Um, in the rear, we installed uh, the Kicker PSC 65s, and we installed the Rockford Fosgate Prime R2 10-inch subwoofer. Um, all in all, I think the biggest difference was probably in the front speaker upgrade. Um, but really, what rounded everything out was the subwoofer. Um, so definitely recommend getting a subwoofer. Um, add the rear speakers if, if you want to have some of the uh, mid and high range for your rear passengers. Um, it's a great upgrade. I'm really happy and the family's really happy now that we have uh, good sound and tunes and really good bass uh, when we're cruising on road trips. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you was I, I did have the dealer activate the rear um, fader and that works out. And they did that for free. Just look at the video description for information. And this is what it enables on the screen. 